Should be wearing speedos or something. Well, I mean, maybe just that one person who runs that one like, <laughs> online publication. <laughs> oh, DJ, Harry Farmer, Darren Mills, early birds get no worms. We've got some worms for you to try here, Darren, don't worry. And DJ P, hello, Brew, in the house. Hello. Oh, wash master goodness. Folks, welcome to the Hot Box Show. Tonight, you're joined by myself, Buzz, Emil, Joe, and Jules. And as always, we'll be talking. Land 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 Land. Land. <laughs> so you'll better be fucking rolling up and loading your balls, eh? That has to be on the next t-shirt on the back of yeah. the hashtag. Hashtag Langdang. Hashtag Langdang. Yeah. And then um, we got the Langdang Coffee Shop, and we got the Langdang Seed Bank, and we got the Langdang Cruises, Langdang Overland. What Lang else Dang can we do? Crank. Lang Dang Hand Crank. Lang Dang. Lang Dang Safaris. Get are we going to do? Lang Dang Industries. We're going to be like the Goopsters. We're going to have our dicks in everything. Everything. Yeah. Dacher Capture. You must know. You must know. So, guys, it has been an interesting week. Uh, the last time you saw us, we were all pretty high and strung out. And <coughs> nothing much has changed. Yeah. Nothing much has changed. We are high. We're not so strung out, but we're certainly high. So, um, yeah, it has been quite a week. Um, just as a statistic for everybody, there have been 556,000 visits to the DC Facebook page wow. since 11 o'clock last Tuesday morning. Wow. It's crashed it twice. <coughs> DC server went tits up for a little while. Um, but we're back. We, we've learnt our lessons and reinvented the wheel. But I don't know. If it goes viral like that again, I don't know what it would be that would make it so viral. But <laughs> what else could happen <laughs> to make it so viral? Well, what when, news? We win, when we win the rest. When we win the rest, when yeah, we, win the yeah, no, this is um, we'll break the internet. Yeah. Dhaka culture the one region. state bill. Yeah, so but we get into we get into the rest later and what needs to be continued or not after this ruling because we've had we've admittedly we've had a ton of questions and I'm not going to lie today is going to be a little bit of a rehash of last week's episode a lot just because we've been getting these questions so much yes. but I think we're going to have the same vibe we're going to have all the topics and shit. But this is again to ask us anything, ask me anything, ask Jules anything, ask Joe anything, ask Emil anything. And we'll do our best to give our honest and true answers because again people have a lot of questions. And it's even if it's a stupid question of where do I get seeds, ask the question. Jesus, where do I get seeds? That's been the question of the week. I reckon every seed bank in the country is completely finished. Mm. It has been nope. National Gardening Week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have it on authority that not every seed bank is kiss yet. But yeah. We've been sending people to our preferred Fields of Green for All Green Network affiliates that have been looking after us for years, so we've been spreading the love and sending it back, and uh, they've been busy beavers, so as far as I can tell, the whole goddamn country is growing, because I've just been down the eastern seaboard, and fuck, that's all people are talking about. Are you growing? Have you got something in the pot plant? Or no, ask no questions, yeah, no lies on the hot box show, Oaks. I think well, don't answer that question. Right. Don't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going it's to at least three kilograms. I was Christ. actually going to consider trying. But growing it up. Can we have a discount? Okay. Nobody's a grower the first time. Discount. Yeah. I grew yeah. with a horticulturalist and she um, will be rolling a new grain. And Kamikaze, yeah. and Kamikaze uh, we met Kamikaze, a man in, he's from George, we were in Sedgefield and he gave us some lecker looking down. This is actually from an old friend of ours from Myrtle and I, from the City Karma Forest Earth Dance. This is some really beautiful live run extract he did in the forest. They're all crazy mountain men. Some there. random out. So yeah. the Frenchman with the extracts that we've known for 25 years from the mountains, he's still a freaking genius, Bruce. Because when I first met him, there was no such thing as an extract like that. But he's been peddling shit for years. I think it's about to get a lot hotter in here, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, mm -hmm. and what's that weed you got from Kamokazi? This <coughs> one? Mr. Kamokazi, we met him, finally. And this is his <coughs> Remo Chemo. And I wish I could scratch and sniff it, because it smells absolutely hectic. 
So <coughs> that's looking good in there. And he sent us another one. Uh, well, he gave me another one in my hand. I've been traveling 2,000 Ks with weed in my car. So do you think I'm a dealer? Whoa. Whoa. I could be because I could sell one of them. <laughs> I had 38 <laughs> rand in my car. I mean, it must have been fucking dealing money. So anyway, there's an OG Kush here from the same guys. We really appreciate it, Kamikaze. It was very lucky to meet you. And uh, I reckon you guys are doing one hell of a job growing weed down in the forest. Because this is really smelly, it's crystally, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to stick that in a pipe and smoke it just now. So thank you everybody for donating all this stuff to Myrtle and I on the way down the coast. You can't believe how much weed we have. We actually brought our own weed home with us. We had it stashed in all our usual <laughs> stashed places. And fuck, we brought the weed back because everywhere we went, people were giving us nugs. But they were giving us nugs for an appraisal. You know? and they didn't want to get us scoofed or anything. Bro, check my dope. Because it's like, if I say it's okay, then it must be okay or something. Well, I mean, no we are kind of like a chemist. Kind of liberty. The kind of liberty. You need to get the little green stars. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I, uh, high approved. I, uh, <laughs> high approved. <laughs> Well, uh, Kamikaze, we're going to stick this in a pipe just now, and uh, you stick with the show. Does any what do we have anyone sort of out in the open about selling extract of smokable oils and such? I'm dying to try some on extracts. Martin Latham, it's around and about. It's around. You know what? On a, most of the Facebook groups, the cannabis culture Facebook groups, there are people sliding in menus everywhere. I've seen trichoma with a menu. Then that menu looked like fucking Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen the trichoma menu? It was like it's a fucking like macro special, five it? pages long. It man. was incredible. <laughs> so go to trichoma, yeah. trichoma with an M A on the end of it, and yeah. you'll find their menu. And trichoma, bro, I wish you the best of luck, but fuck, you've got balls, eh? Yeah. Because yeah. that has got loads of prices on it, and that's like dealing and shit so do you think fucking overgrow them sell what you want when you want we can't stop you from doing what you've been doing for 600 years as a cannabis culture but um it's still a gray area and whatever retain your levels of caution because buying and selling any part of the plant it still seems dealing and dealing is still completely illegal. well we're gonna go there for now we're gonna go there but i think before we get there we need to pick up so you know like that cloud coming into camera there oaks oh. there ain't no cgi motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so last week we did this breaking news thing and despite what some people say because fuck me, we got like Twin Towers conspiracy about this. There was genuinely breaking news. It got awkward, yeah? And I was trying to sign off the show and fuck off to bed. And then we got this WhatsApp. Check the WhatsApp. Check the WhatsApp from backstage, yeah? And Joe read this thing out. And this was, it was an announcement from the, the cops or the Hawks or whatever in Limpopo that the cops must leave people alone for three kilograms or less. And we ran with the story. We all, the whole fucking internet I think, you do, I think you did great investigative yeah. journalism. Yeah, and positive. to have the balls to ring the cop on it's the directed nice. live and go through the whole thing, Myrtle and I were just chuckling away. Because my heart was in, like, real I know, it's exciting shit. Yeah. So once you're done watching, yeah, go watch last week's episode, Oaks. Literally, <coughs> the Oaks backstage, yeah, called this cop on, live on air. And he said, um, yeah, it's legit. It's like, it's a Limpopo directive. And then all of a sudden, I put a post up the next morning. I thought, that guy's a constable now. <laughs> <laughs> it got leaked out the wrong direction. And since then, there's been, there's been reports all over the place about yeah. it. And you know what that feeling was like for those two days? When everybody thought three kilograms was the fucking limit. You had this imaginary thing going on. About <laughs> how fucking amazing it could actually be. Yeah, but, but how many people have actually seen three kilograms of weed? Loads of people, actually, I had no idea. Yes, so if I can put that into perspective, yeah. <coughs> it's 15 of these jars. And just to give you like, some fucking perspective. Four jars, not. Yeah, now he's got a big head as well, eh? Oh, dude. <laughs> That's not the first or the last time I'll hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's 15 of those motherfuckers. What was your, what was, were you listening to the show last week at all? Yeah, I was you yeah, So, yeah. Y you would imagine, watching it for real, that we, we, the, the crew, we were watching it as well from Sedgefield. And they rang live, somebody picks it up, they confirm they're a cop, and they tell it's a directive, it's not law, but it's a, an internal he memorandum. He stumbled, he, he, yeah, he was nervous, yeah. Yeah. who am I speaking So then to? all of a sudden, shit goes down and it's all fake. 
And it all came from such a predictable fucking place. Well, Emil, when did you first hear that it was fake? Uh, there's quite a few people that was negative to the news and said it can't be, there's no way it can't, it can be the best. So it was, uh, yeah, there's quite a few people that, that ended up saying that they, they were negative, especially on the highlight pages. They, they were skeptical that this was actually it. Like yeah, because it shouldn't be three kgs. grams. It should be as many kgs as you want. Yes, that's think, the point. It actually, yeah. shouldn't be a limit. That that's right. But that's another whole story that we're gonna we're not gonna get that without a fight and a fight and a fight. But we have to get some happy medium that makes it relative to like booze. Yeah, because yes. we all can pack a car full of booze and drive to the trans guy with it. Nobody gives a well, shit. Well, I mean, you're allowed to have a wine cellar of chocolate block full of wine. Yeah, well, we can. We can have a dacha yeah. cellar full of dacha now. Yeah, we can, more than three cages, because I, as I understand it, that only applies to outside of your home. That's right. So that's, that's what there's no, there's no limit yeah. for at home, actually. Yeah, no, that's, that, that, yeah. that's So, so yeah, they, they, would, mind there. they <laughs> would jump in the gun a lot, the cops. They didn't know what to do, because you know what? To this moment, I don't think Charles has had an arrest helpline query. In eight days, the Dacher arrest helpline has gone quiet while everybody's kind of regrouped. Yeah. So, just so we give everyone some context, so the timeline in this situation is pretty much this time last week, we're on the phone with this cop saying, Is this fucking thing real? He tunes, Yeah, this thing's real, eh? <laughs> So we then get on it, we gas it, we put it out there everywhere it's real. And then like within 24 or maybe just 48 hours, there's rumors that this isn't real and that it's there's like this headline on News24, nope you don't, which I actually think is offensive. So fuck you News24. Yeah, no. Ah, they are yeah. offensive. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah, no, yeah, fuck you. We can't yeah, naturally yeah, pessimistic. That's our like journalism. It's like all just journalism. journalism. Sorry, I must have failed journalism. Yeah, yeah no, no, well that's where failed journalists go, News24. There's nowhere else for them to fucking go. Anyway, yeah, they go to the hydro. Private column. Oh, no, they go to the hydro. <laughs> <laughs> so, we actually got a News24 column thing coming up. So, News24 tunes, it was fake news. And some other local site that has this niche in this niche of hating activism due to his own frustrations. Yeah. Um, is like an insult of activism. And if you don't know what an insult is, go look it up. Yeah. So <laughs> it's different to an outsult. So, <laughs> so, no circle so it went around that it was fake news. And then the timeline flipped because then it turned out that it wasn't fake news because then and go check it out on Fields of Green. We've got the link in the article. Yeah, there's a, I wrote a blog post about the timeline. Because yeah. then it's not fake. We so what's it now? So now what's this thing real? What's the story? To say that well, it's, not not fake. it's actually a 180 degrees backpedal from the cops. It yeah. was completely cop worthy. Yeah. The cops let it out. And then the Mail and Guardian yesterday actually said it was a Hawks directive. Yes, they did. Like Limpopo. Limpopo Hawks. And the reason it was three kilos was they had to make uh, make provision for oil and stuff. Some which was shit, I don't like know. I don't know what it. So the bottom line is the cops were saving face. It shouldn't have got out, and it was brilliant journalism out of this crew here that I'm looking at. They got it out there. They put egg on the face of the cops because we're watching them every step of the freaking way now. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting yeah. week though for people. That. Now you, we know who our friends and our enemies are a lot more defined now mm -hmm. that that has happened. Eh? There's mm -hmm. some people out there that you will never fucking satisfy. Yes. Jesus, what other judgment do you want to have a fucking Jesus. good week as a cannabis Jesus. user? Yeah, it was working. fucking amazing. And this yeah. puss came down on us like a ton of bricks. Uh, Fake. <laughs> Fake. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> man. Because also, <laughs> so this so ape, he must have been sitting there smoking his pups and twigs. Which is cool if it floats your boat. Yeah. You're going to complain that floats your boat once time. upon a time. So he must have sat there, smoked his two kilograms of tips and tweaks. Got a, a, a very mellow chubby to us. <laughs> hey? <laughs> so much pips and tweaks couldn't get it full up. And then he got this whole conspiracy in his head. Dun, dun. And we orchestrated this thing. Yeah. So it means that Jules was outside the door. Acting like Colonel von Stade. Yeah, uh, Colonel von Stade was a total imposter and a mate of ours that we'd rung and it, the whole directive was, how the yeah. fuck do you make this shit up? It's like some... It's a, it's, it must be like... Yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't get what the motivation is. Because um, it's like really... It. It's, we, we just don't actually lower ourselves to um, in, interacting with it. Because you know? mm -hmm. it has been going on from that source for quite some time. We have no fucking... Yeah. Idea yeah, when it when it'll ever stop. So what is the deal now as it stands with the as it stands, thing? As it stands, there is still no 
way that anybody can quantify anything. And let's face it, the jury, the, the, the judges didn't quantify it because they don't know. They can't quantify it. They're old men. They can't quantify somebody with 300 kilos of wheat growing because, like, um, it's my right to have 100 grams of hemp seed every day as nutrition. So I need to grow that shit. Yeah. So, fuck, I need at least two kilo, two, yeah. ki two hectares. What if I want to make my own meat bits, you know? But the principles are the dealing. The principles are the dealing. Yeah. That's a very small thing. Because as soon as the cash leaves your hand... And with the street value up, dude, remember. Obsessed all of those years with that one fucking string. Do you it's think that open will tell them what the actual street value is now? <laughs> well, the street value is going to remain completely the same for the time being. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing much is going to happen, and all the people who are up in arms about it won't see a difference. It won't be perceptible. The only difference that I can see is every single stoner I've met from, from Sedgefield through Nizer and through Chitsi Karma, they've, they've been cured of their paranoia. Look, I heard a theory that the three kilo thing was because Limpopo is lack of water, province, and high traffic, and the cops are tired. Why three kilos? Yeah, was kind of maybe big. that's why three, three kilos, kilos is so like they leave the small guys alone. They're focusing on maybe anything. Three like kilos is but why three it's a kilos? Theory. It's a theory. Why not five? Why not? It's a soft limit. It's not. It, mm. it wasn't ruled by the judges, so we shouldn't. We can't even run with it really. Or maybe what they did the is they they sense. went and they pulled all they pulled out some weed from the evidence room. And they pulled out some confiscated car from a drug dealer, and they saw how much weed they could fucking kick into the cubby hole. <laughs> and then they got the cubby hole just to go, <laughs> and then they took it all out and they weighed it, and that was three kilos. Yeah, a cubby hole of weed. Much less. Oh, and then they weighed the whole fucking cubby hole. <laughs> <laughs> all, those, all those days of fucking putting half kilo sausages into door panels in Swaziland, it's like a fucking. Oh, I just had the flashback to cramming things into cars. <laughs> so I think we've had enough of our, our regression into last week. The, yeah, the bottom line is there is still no limit. Yeah. Whatever limit you have that the cops are what looking at has to have a very plausible story as to how it won't be transacted within any form. You can't even give it to your mate apparently. Mm -hmm. But that's yes. an apparently, and so my message is personally, go on doing exactly what you were doing before. But you've got much less chance of being arrested, and you've got nearly zero chance of going to jail for a weekend, as long as you're only breaking one law at a time. That's it. If you've got a firearm, or you've got some, you've, uh, you've abducted someone, or your car's fucked, or it's anything they can get you on that will make it a lot more than a weed deal. So the cops are going to be looking for their quotas still, and like, what was it, 260,000? drug-related addresses in the stats this year. Let's see if we can get them over 100 this year, because they fucking don't know who to arrest yeah. anymore. They've yeah. been arresting us for so long. There isn't going to be any stats if they're not careful. But well, I'm really excited about them actually going out and catching some real criminals. Like, I'm sure everybody kind of looks forward to them. It's fucking hope so. I hope so, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, hey, like to say it. Like arrest helpline just hasn't had a call. I'll go right there. I mean, right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go no, arrest no. out from the drawers. Oh, you fool that little, you tickle that six year old on the inside. You know, oh, you know what, that's, that's, that. that's pretty fucked up stuff. Sure. Right there. Oh, but yeah, let's not get to McCall. You know what, somebody on Twitter blamed that on legal wig. On Twitter today, really? I literally saw, on Twitter today, somebody said this would never have happened if they hadn't have made weed legal. Oh, I, I swear to God, I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and they, it'll still be the steak scapegoat for people's ills for long time to come in. Yeah. For fuck's sake. We're going to get into a bit of that later because actually we're going to get into the propaganda that's been going on on the other side of the fence. But we had an interesting story this week. It wasn't viral, but I saw it going around. It was an article in News 24's Parent 24 section. And it was a letter. So it was an open letter that some dude wrote in. Uh, they'd, they'd done an article, things you need to know about the criminal whatever. And he tunes, I'm responding to your article on News 24 with regards to using cannabis as a parent. I am a 30-year-old white male, husband, father, and a user of cannabis. I would like it to remain, or I would like to remain anonymous, as even though the law has recently changed, there are still obvious stigmas attached to it. I am going to be real here. Dude, your second paragraph does not help our fucking cause. See if you can resubmit this. I started smoking when I was 21 and have continued to do so on and off for years. Over the last three or four years I have become a regular user due to the fact that cannabis oil is now available 
and it feels like a healthier alternative. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe I need to get scolded here. But basically, when you go read the article, he goes on to say, I've been smoking it, whatever. And you do the math, and he says he's 30 odd, but then it turns out if you do the math, he's 50 odd, which is crazy. But he goes on to say, Listen, I'm a good dad. Yeah. When my kids come to me to ask me about what am I smoking, I'll be honest with them. Yeah. And I'll say it is good, and it's bad, and it is what it is. But I also I'll say to them, If you want to do this thing, do it when you're over 21. And he's also saying things like, yeah, no, it went down. 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 It went Huskies. <laughs> yeah, we're just practicing for ad breaks for Nando's where they give us a hundred grand a second. Yes. <laughs> uh, they can run that Azisha ad or whatever. Uh, can I say, well, um, hello, yes, right, whoop, whoop, sorry about that. And it's another one of those stories where you pay people a monthly subscription to get us out to simultaneous. What we're trying to do is get out to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. And our streaming company, it's like as soon as they hear a content, some sort of they literally just dropped a signal. They did it in Richards Bay. We just, remember with Bobby, we started up three times. Fuck it, man. You think you're too, you think you're too hard about this? <laughs> I just want to. No, 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 I just want to scare us in your house. No, but you know, I know what the problem is. Just like we got fake news, we got fake data. Fake data. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's being transmitted to the wrong universe. <laughs> uh, fuck. So maybe in the last 20 minutes nobody saw. Anyway, we've got a lively feed going on. Please join the live chat. It's very yeah. interesting in there. Mm, um, I, I don't know how much is real and how much is fake, but it's all fucking. It's entertaining. Today. <laughs> <laughs> so please remember, like, share, subscribe, all that shit. Yeah, because you're going to get the inside track here, and um, we tell it how it is with the truth, yeah. just like the Ducker couple said all along. Pubes Tell the fucking <laughs> truth, because by the time you get to court, you won't remember what you said, so the truth is the best thing. Yeah. And I'm completely behind the crew that rang the cops and got him stuttering to say, yeah, it's real, but he didn't have the authority to say it live over fucking YouTube. <laughs> no, we didn't. So, that was, that that was it. We got him, but we got him on that because uh, that's what investigative journalism is. I think we were victims of our own confidence there as well. We're not victims you know, at all. We got a story and we ran out. with it live because who the fuck wouldn't? Hmm. Who the fuck wouldn't? Well, uh, this the, person the, the, to this one the engineer person. later well, said to me, that, that night I rang the engineer, our engineer, and said, Prue, that was fucking classic. And he said, well, I sat there thinking, what would Jules do? Yeah. And I said, well, you're right, I'd fucking yeah. ring him this you one. You guys inspire us, sure. Yeah, well, that's what it is. That, that's what activism is. You've mm. got to take it past your boundary and make your head and your, your chest thump sometimes with the mm. adrenaline of the shit you might get into. But... Anyway, pulled it off and I'll stick by everything. I've seen in depth the sequence of events of the journalism surrounding it and I'm convinced that cops had egg on their faces with the colonel saying the wrong thing on the wrong channel. That's all. It's no big deal. It was fun for two days that fucking three kilos, like, that would do me okay to get around the country. Yeah. You could, you know, it would be okay. It was fun thinking about it. Mm. But fuck why these people have been so... Why are they so angry about it? What, what, are they trying to just disgrace us or something? What is the fucking motivation? Yeah. So Why? That, the latest no is that no That's arrests, they just have to issue a summons. Yeah, you know, you can't go down, you can't get put in a cage. Uh, you have to be cited just like in the UK. Even if they think you're dangerous, so they still cannot put you in jail. There'd be no way. And print out this document. Anytime you're ready. You don't have it. Do you know they need evidence to support? So there should be evidence to actually support uh, the fact that there was dealing going on. Yes, it's not, it's not just a hearsay or suspicion or reasonable. But no, it's got to be. It's got to be much more than that. Now they've really got out their ducks in a row to be able to bring you in because nothing. Huh? They actually know that nothing's going to stick. You see, so it's quite. It's quite a profound thing. Uh, but to all of you dealers out there that were dealing and got caught before the judgment. You're still dealers and you still have to go to court, so to join the Q system and everybody on the stage of prosecution are stacked behind Myrtle and I if you if you followed our papers. 
and we still have to go to Pretoria to finish a trial and then we have to, from that trial we have to make our charges invalid should that I mean obviously that trial will find the, 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 the government like guilty as charged. Should we pause yeah until it catches up quickly? <coughs> Checking if it's a signal or YouTube. Oh no, just gonna give him a mic catch up. YouTube no. no. Oh fuck okay. So um so what the, let's see, should we chat, get the head on any comments? There's the old man here. We'll line up on Yeah, no, YouTube stuff, it's got struggling. Yeah, we'll chill for And we've got an upload speed, and I can run a Seven. speed test. We're cruising. Are we running 7, 20, 30 frames? No, 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 no I think fancy, mate. Just run of the mall. Shiny There's boards, there. looking so good. Are we, so what, are, are we being, are we being, Looks like YouTube by is, YouTube. Uh, that's what it looks like. Looks like yeah. YouTube is throttling it. Yeah. YouTube's throttling it. Uh, so so can you go out of 4 8 It's Sorry? It's if it's... Uh, no. We oh, have the problem in real We're just into active the comments for now. Just that or something. Just that pops up. Yeah. So they've throttled us down to 160 kilobytes per second. And then complaining that it's not enough. And what does that get us out in 480? Or even fuck all. Fuck all. That's audio. Two frames a second. That's, That's audio yeah. only. Audio is like 128k. Yeah. Not even audio. Not even audio. It stops the whole packet. And the, the speed is just brilliant. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with the speed. Ah, oh, fuck me, okay, so we are not no, live at the moment. No, we are not. We're not sending enough. I'm only sending 172 mm -hmm. kilobits per second, yeah. only sending two. They're going to see buffer on this on the channel. It's not happening. Black screen is spinning. Um, if I take a look at the uh, YouTube stream, I can't even yeah. view the YouTube stream at the moment at, we just go down to 144. Let's see if that works. But no, there they are. Okay, so I think the audio is coming through. Uh, uh, chat is still going. Audio? Let me just ask Dan if you can hear the audio. Is a season on that year, yeah, I'm just. Read it out, it's a live number. Read it out, it's a live number. Read it out, it's a live But then read the comment for us live. Here's the thing. That's just your router then. No. Wow, that's quite amazing. So, are we. Can everybody hear? Can, on the live feed, can you hear us in the studio? Because we've just been clipped by YouTube. We can't even get two out of three frames out at the moment. But can you hear us at all. on audio at all while we try and figure this out? Because we might have to switch this feed to YouTube. I mean, to Facebook, just to see what's going to on. See what happens just there, go to yeah. Facebook now and just let's let's go to Facebook. Let's, go, yeah. let's take it to Facebook and okay. see if it is YouTube. Let's just see if it's Facebook. If it's uh, so YouTube. Mickey Dangerous of Game Comics. Okay. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to stop the stream now to YouTube. Stop the stream to Okay, cool. Thank Ooh. you for doing that, guys. Welcome to the Hotbox on Facebook. Yeah. Take 420. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us, Oaks. Do you know what this feels like? For some of you Oaks who ever listened to or, or um, really got into reading the Harry Potters, mm -hmm. there was this radio network thing when Voldemort took over. Yes. And every night when they broadcast, they'd have to broadcast at a different frequency. And only the people yes. in you knew. It feels a bit like It's this. like when in the early days when we started doing all the raids around South London and you have to be on the end of a phone to find out where the fucking awesome. warehouse was and everybody would get on the M25 yeah. and head off to the warehouse party. Awesome. Awesome. Fucking the, the Happy Mondays. Happy Mondays. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Awesome. The first time, yeah, that late 80s taking E for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Which is safer than the oh, horse. Oh, that horse <laughs> Got more chance of falling off a horse than you know. I have fallen off a horse twice. Uh, uh, Sydney, twice. Sydney, hello, Sydney. Dennis, Elliot, you can join in. It's okay. Now we're in again. Hello, everyone. Just we're place. back. Yeah, we're back, guys. Jesus, what a freaking story it is to be subversive. 
It's just really hard work to be subversive sometimes. I'm exhausted with being subversive. I think Why do we have to be subversive? We're in a private space. Because now the corporation cannot use what we are doing to advertise Mercs. It's fucking useless to them. They can't, their algorithms get fucked up yes. by the fact we say fucked up and puss and things like that. They can't do that and have an Audi A4 on the book. That's what <laughs> I think on the left, P Bob, uh, Facebook's going to drop us down to three frames a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so get ready, folks. <laughs> oh, shit. So, before the intermission, what were you talking about the parent doing his thing and you said something about the second paragraph? I didn't get it. Uh, no, uh, I feel like the second paragraph's been edited, or I imagined it, <laughs> but there was that thing about math. But what we're going to get down to is basically this dude wrote into News24, he wrote an open letter, because he's a dad. And it was featured in their Parent24 section, and I'm just going to read the opening bit and then give you a bit of a summary. Because it's a bit of a verse list. I'm just going to maul some of his kamikaze. Remo Kimo! No. Camo says that's what we should start with. So plus reps, Camo. Okay, so how this goes is the Oak says, I'm responding to your article on News24. It's regards to using cannabis as a parent. I am a 30-year-old white male, husband, father, and a user of cannabis. I would like to remain anonymous, as even though the law has recently changed, there are still obvious stigmas attached to it. I started smoking when I was 21 and have continued doing so on and off for years. However, the last three or four years I have become a regular user due to the fact that cannabis oil is now available and it feels like a healthier alternative to actually smoking it. I'm a responsible user of cannabis. I have decent employment. I always show up for work on time, complete goals that I set out to achieve and have never been under the influence of cannabis at work. I pay my bills and I provide for my family. Thanks, and he goes on to say that at first his wife wasn't cool with his cannabis use, but over the last sort of few years, she's noticed so many people consuming it and being responsible and not wrapping their car around a pole on the way home with the lighty in the back, yeah. that she's actually now become more conducive to it at home. So he's able to be himself. Because he, he ultimately, he did that thing that I think I'm lucky not to have to do, and maybe a lot of us aren't are, but he made that compromise for love. He ditched Mary Jane. That's a tough one. Why and he did make the point that he does not smoke in front of the kids. Yeah. He has been stoned around the kids, and even his, his wife admitted that he was a better parent. He was more patient, he spent more time playing with the kids and interacting with the kids instead of like, I've you seen know, it all my life. the zombie the in front of the phone the, thing. The, yeah. 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 the gateway to actually getting on with kids. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was a really good letter, and I'm really well done to use 24 Parent 24 for publishing that. No. Quite, quite weird. Well, is that one of those sort of parents' mm -hmm. contrib a contribution thing that anyone can, yeah. get, anyone can get published, or do they vet it? To they do vet it. They, they do, do vet, vet it. it. Okay. I think it made it because of things, you know? Quite right. So, yeah. well, uh, I've said it so many times over the past, over these last 50 odd episodes, that the best kids I ever met were the ones whose parents taught them how to use cannabis in a positive, positive, in a positive way and were doing dodgy shit and, and round the back stuff, you know? So, um, all, the, all my favourite kids of my peers, I don't have kids, but there's 50, late 50 something or other who have 30 year old kids now and I've watched them grow up. They're remarkable kids, and they're all doing well, they're all really balanced, and they always were. So I reckon one of the side effects of this judgment is the fact that people are going to be better parents and be nicer for it. And be, and just There'll be a more understanding society, I'm convinced of it. It's going to take a while for sure. like the judginess to go away. Yeah. Twitter's been the a bitch for a week. The professionals are kicking up a storm, they're not happy. Have you been? Have you been watching Twitter? Have you been doing any data on Twitter lately? To be honest, it's been the news has been like it's more tsunami. It's 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 just catching up with what the important bits are and all of the the fake news, all the other stuff. You know, there's there's a cloud of there's a, there's a white cloud and then there's like a grey cloud. Yeah. And you know, yeah. With, with the news, we want to follow the the white cloud. But, um, yeah. It's, it's the, the traffic. Been up. Traffic's been quite phenomenal. We've manipulated loads of it. I mean, we all know how to get stuff out over the years. We, we're good at doing that. But I've seen the most extraordinary headlines on Twitter. I retweeted the Business Insider today. Then they had an article with five growing tips. 
Yeah. Yeah. Business yeah. insider. It's fucking yeah. business insider. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, the suit's on the fifth floor and they know how to do hardware. Yeah. How the f- how, can, how is that? Yeah. Like, all I can see is like, they, they can fucking afford the equipment. <laughs> yeah. All I can see in my mind is old Bruce Whitfield on Seven S Two. He's like, tonight we're going to talk about Lane Yeah, the Lane Dang exchange rate. <laughs> and I have my special guest here to show you how to grow a 20 ton plant <laughs> in five easy steps. Uh, Can you imagine? But it's happening. It's, that's, uh, that's it's, coming. it's quite extraordinary where the headlines are coming from at the moment. And they're trying to pepper it with, oh, you remember the, the bad news as well, because it's all mostly positive now. It's mostly a, a turning point and people seeing it as a thank God for that. Now let's work it out from here. Yeah, but the it's a, it, all of the negativity is coming from exactly the normal places. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It, the, the negativity portals haven't changed in any way. No, well, they've gone all sour now, especially like rehab places. Oh, we're going to get the don't get all oh, the rehab don't places. Get, uh, spoiler. Excuse, excuse, spoiler. Excuse. Before we get onto the rehab <laughs> pauses, um, something that this article stirred up in me is a question that I, I can't always put to myself because I'm not a parent, but uh, like to the parentals in the house and to the parentals out there. So this guy in this article said, you know, when the time comes, so you have to check with these lights as he's going to. But like, when do you have the how to roll a nice joint chat with your lighty? Do you have it pre or post the sex that's talk? The, that's the same line when you say, go fetch me a beer. Post-sex yeah, talk. yeah, it actually okay. is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, I never thought of that, dude. Yeah, no, kids are your slaves, yeah, and yeah, that's why you have kids is to go and do shit. Like handing alcohol. No, actually, they so, they sh- yeah. and the alcohol should be locked up as well. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to down bottles of vodka every day and, and get addicted to weed in the end. Because yeah. alcohol is the gateway, remember? But do you think there is an age <laughs> to this discussion? When do you have the weed talk with your lighty? When they ask, yeah, when they see that, when they, they, when they, don't when they find your stash, yeah, yeah, when they just ask, the time. they're going to ask bluntly exactly what it is yeah. one day, they do. Uh, I personally think a weed talk or any rite of ceremony talk, a weed is not weed, weed is a teacher plant, it's an entheogen like San Pedro's and peyotes and other mind-altering plants that have been used for centuries to get from adolescence to adulthood, and I reckon 13 is the day that that happens, just like a circumcision in some in cultures, other people, there's there many different rites of passages in many cultures, but whiteies in the western world have had all of that taken away. So I reckon the baseline is 13. Another way to do it is when your kids can clearly recognise the difference between when you stone and when you're not. Yeah. Well, what happened? With, you tell. You must have story. <laughs> You're a mother. They must have t- wrapped yeah. up one day. So, so wait. Uh, before you, why did you just put the milk in the broom cupboard? <laughs> before you answer this, before you answer this, I need to like get my head around. Is the context of this because in my life I'm always stoned. So did they notice when you weren't high or when you were high? They noticed that I was a bit grumpier when I'm not high. Okay. They're a bit snappier, not as patient. And they just suggest that you, you need to have a drunk. Yes, and not often. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. now, because now the <laughs> oldest is 24, the youngest is 14. But you see... Is that what happened? That's really hilarious. Mm. They prefer you on weed. They do. But because do you reckon that's... Um, and I and also, know. the way I raise my kids is not to lie about you stuff. Yeah, kids. Yeah, no, because right. how are they supposed to trust me yeah. if I lie to them? Yeah. And yeah. how can I expect them yeah. to be honest with me if I lie to them? Yeah. So yeah. I've always said to them, like, be you, do you. Like, did you know, you come, when did you if come? I shout about something, just bear with me while I adjust. Kind and of and do you kind of remember the first smoking sesh you had to actually cement the smoking relationship with, it, with your kids? You know, you actually sat down and said, here, choke no, on this. <laughs> you little I actually shins. can't remember the exact time, I must tell you. But I think, if, I know Brad was definitely about 20. Oh, after school. Yeah. After school, yeah. 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 But it I mean, I've always like being pretty like, you know, yeah. chill, chill, chill and open about the yeah. subject anyway. So it was never a taboo subject. It was for Gran, but the kids helped me change her mind. Well, we, we've formulated a drug policy in the workplace that feels a green for all today. And um, you can use weed, but you have to bring your own bomb. 
Bring your bum to where you go. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. So, <laughs> Fox 20 friendly office. It's a private place, and we're proud of it. We really yeah. function on we. I dig this shit. Right, that guy with Carsey. Let's see if I can shit. speak after this shit. Private networking mm -hmm. spaces that we friendly can happen now. And we've watched it happen in a short few days on the coast. There's a woman in Neisner at the at a coffee shop in the main square. She said, come around, for, I'll stick you for a breakfast on the way down the road after the presentation. So the next day, we get coffee and a slap up me, and she says, okay, I've got this room in the back here now, and I've got, I'll, order, I'll put a private sign on it. So if I get people uh, membership cards as they walk in, and I sell them a cappuccino for a hundred bucks, is that okay? <laughs> and she fucking grasped it. Yeah, straight away. Yeah. Right. Cookies, and that's what it's going to be. Because yeah. cool. you know what's real? The hustle. So I reckon Oaks interpret as you will, but I reckon the hustle's on. Okay. Have you got Jeremy? Uh, they're going to let us know on that. Oh. We are attempting a special guest thing with Jeremy, but we're not going to jinx it because we tend to do that to ourselves. So. I don't know, I think maybe at some point we will carry a parental advisory notice at the beginning no, of the show. Is, there is on YouTube. <laughs> is there? Yeah, no, it's, it's actually, they put it on us. Because, like, this next section. So, you know, stoners are known for, like, really sometimes being out there with why weed should be legalized. It'll save everything. I'll grow it and I'll survive with my one plant a year and build the house off it and smoke it <laughs> and make my socks and my shin paper twin ply, too. You know how big the plant is? You are, that's, you are, that's a big plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's going to do it at his mom's place in the back of the band. But, uh, so anyway, so, you know, I get it. But on the other side, there's some pretty extreme stuff. And I'm going to go there because, fuck, I could not ignore this story. This was a Doctors for Life thing on mm. Facebook. Fuck, you're doing that to me again. And these oaks are getting, uh, oaks, I don't know how to say it, it's pretty desperate. I'm going to ask you to bear with me as I read this fucking... Abysmal post. I'll just up and open another tranquilizer for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was like just over a week ago. USA. Horrible child abuse death in Texas highlights links to marijuana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a Texas man fatally stabbed his 16 month old son in, a Lewis, in Louisville, Dallas. Police found fresh burnt marijuana as well as a haze of smoke in the apartment of 27 year old Blair Ness, who is charged in the death of his toddler. The incident suggests a marijuana induced psychosis, a problem in about 10% of child abuse deaths, <laughs> says parents Pop. opposed to Pot, who has been tracking this trend. Pop found news reports of 113 child deaths directly linked to marijuana use in 31 states in 2012. In Vermont, a father in psychosis jumped four stories with his six-year-old son. Anxious and suicidal, Tyler Denning had been smoking marijuana and claimed God made him do it. Fortunately, both survived. Texas released its report on child abuse deaths with half the 172 child abuse deaths in 2017 coupled with substance abuse. Marijuana was the most used substance connected to child abuse and it led deaths. Followed by alcohol, cocaine, and methamphetamine. In one terrible case last year, oh, Cynthia Randolph left her two toddlers in the car while she smoked pot. Both children died. Wow. According to the report, the deaths caused by the parents of kid given abusing substances, 56, blah, 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 blah. So they basically what? So, so not so long ago, they said if you're going to smoke some weed, you better get that CBD lube out because you're using on that, that on your mama later. Because that's what weed's going to do to you. Now they're saying right after you've mmmed your mom, you're going to get the cuppy out and you're going to go your toddler in its cradle. Yeah. It's I'm hard. sorry, but that seems to be crossing a fucking line. Yeah. You know what? Maybe it happened, but once, ever. How many so times have died when parents have left them, forgotten them in the car when they go shopping? Does that mean we should outlaw shopping? Parents have left their kids <laughs> in the car and forgotten yeah. to drop them off at crash. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a seriously crutchy touch in the stores. I mean, really? Nobody's yeah. blamed at one beer. No. No. No, but what about then the cups around and around and there was clouds of smoke? I mean, how long does, look at this place, where four of us are smoking constantly, yes. there's not clouds of smoke. Yeah, maybe they make the baby into a bomb. <laughs> <laughs>
just oh. saying. <laughs> so um, I, I remember I, I remember the thing now, and there was two other links on the bottom of that referencing um, the, the horrors of legalizing weed, and this whole thing about. Going after the church, you know, he was being, he was being uh, legit. Let's start scratching. But let's start. The <laughs> but now, but now, <laughs> thirdly, you had it out with Sanka this week a I little bit. Have you done a Sanka? So you I just, I just said to them, I asked them if a four-year-old wrote that article. So before we do this, let's give context. Let's give context. Sanka. So if you get caught with some, with ooh, half a gram or some pips or whatever or a bit more. You would get sent to a rehab, typically, which is yeah. Sanka, the South African National Council of Alcohol Abuse or some shit abuse yeah. of everything abuse except wife abuse. But um, so they ran this article, which was pretty negative. I think was it on their own site? Oh, it was incredibly negative, and I'm not sure if it's the same article that they um, ran in Richards Bay. I think it's a Caxton paper. This okay. one particularly was the Heidelberg. Sound. Uh, something in um, Herald yeah. Uh, and yeah I got an email this morning uh, by some people who were very upset by this article because yeah. they felt that they were being singled out um, they felt like they were being you know, non-cannabis people were being um, encouraged to out the cannabis community so <coughs> they could lose their jobs and things like that Christ right? really? That's this is that's yeah, fucking rude. It was the first thing <coughs> for the morning, and I was like, "Hey, you do lots of things under the effects of fear. Mm. This is irrationality personified. Mm. Like, they can't be rational when they think such things. Are we so much of a threat? But that's fear now is driving companies to write policy letters to send out to their employees. I saw one today. Yeah. As a reiteration to everyone, you signed our drug law. Our drug law trumps their law, and they're right. If you have signed a drug contract and but the, anything to do with cannabis, I would imagine now is going to be very, very iffy and they're not going to want to touch it because they know that you cannot prove impairment. You've got to be really fucking blazed to be kicked out of a job. I don't know anybody so blazed that to be so fucked that they can't work. I, I would have fired myself by now. I would have fired him long ago. Yes, there's a thing of the same as well, you know, but no. Yeah. Same as being drunk. You can have a, you can go to work for Babalas, and that's kind of okay. As long as oh, you laugh about it. No, he's got a Babalas. Yeah. That Babalas, we test, test that morning. That Babalas, you, you've got trace elements there. Oh yeah. But sometimes a bit he more than trace elements. He can still be arrested for drunk driving. Yes. So that's that's the same thing. That and, and Dafa doesn't give you a Babalas the same way as Oppa gives you a Babalas. So in an impairment way, the next day is not so much of an impairment as if you do go. You would, hey, you brush your teeth again. You're pissed. Yeah. You've had three hours sleep and you had a skin full, you've pissed on the way to work. So this is just excuses, excuses. But again, they're, they're scrambling to have an opinion to figure out what to do. And uh, what they're doing is just covering their ass. So, uh... <laughs> we shouted at the journalists more than we and I was like, please, man, uh, really, don't you guys have access to Google by now, really? And also, <coughs> Grammar, come on, 
<laughs> okay? <laughs> we call me grammar Nazis in the drug war. If it's a journalist, I can be a grammar Nazi. If it's a journalist, I can. So, you know, they went through all the usual tropes. Gateway drug. They did say something interesting about the context of smoking around children. Because the ruling was very broad. And it feels like weed rules now are actually broader than tobacco. In a way, but not. But in some ways. Yeah, but uh, without the commas. But I think everybody is conscientious. Any, any sm cigarette smokers I know is conscientious enough to not do it in front of the mm. kids or go outside and respect people's places. It's a, it's socially accepted. And you don't consenting adults. Pardon? Un and unconsenting adults. Yes. Unconsenting adults. Yeah. I, I, I made that <coughs> point in a tweet yesterday, saying, "Thank heavens the Concord judgment didn't make it compulsory." Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. people think they're That's under threat, yes. that everyone's going to be doing this shit now. Yeah, yeah. I bet you everyone that did it before is doing it twice as much. And For the people. A week or two. And, uh, then the, and then it's, it's like. Gonna, you know. Yeah, no, there's other things to deal with. Eh? Yeah. There's, there's other things it's to like do. Like test it at work anymore. Well, I think people testing at work for weed specifically will have their head in the 20th century. They'll just, it's just going to cost them too much money in litigation when pe when stoners have the, 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 the actual armory from the Concorde to say, I can smoke it at home, you prove I was fucked the next morning. Yeah. They can't, so they're not going to, hopefully. I think, um, we'll ask Quinton. Quinton! We'll ask Quinton. Quinton, what's going on with this? What's going on with this? I have to come up with a way to handle these kinds of cases. Yes, we should do it, Quinton's around next time. We should do compulsory piss tests and test them live on air. They give us pass. Hey, but anyway, we mustn't forget that. Uh, uh, <laughs> what they yeah, want? I reckon, uh, I reckon was it that yeah, would definitely be watched by a gay duck magazine. <laughs> gay <Duck> magazine. <laughs> no, no, dude, with like little stars over the nips. So, so, so what I do have to get into though is that again, again, Oaks are getting, Sanker's getting to, you know, they they brought out the usual chem sheet. Oh, it's a gateway drug. Blah blah blah. But what they say is Sanka firmly believes at the bottom of the legalization lies something making more money and whether the possible impact thereof has been duly considered on the economy, health and the other aspects of the country as a whole. Although there is increasing support for the legalization of cannabis, it may well be that only a small minority is in favor of such a step, while the silent majority may not necessarily be in support of such action. So they're saying, they're saying this show is sponsored by Monsanto. <laughs> Sank is saying basically somebody's going to be making money out of weed and it's not going to be us. In fact, our bottom line, they did mention the words bottom line, yeah. their bottom line is going to be affected. Their yeah, cannabis because there's no, there's no magistrate. There's no magistrate sending them off, people off to diversion. Yeah. Okay, uh, six months with Jockey Dick Short. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah six months at Jefferson Sanko on a Saturday being fed some white pills and being told about cheese ass. Yeah. What's a cannabis? Can you sue the cops? Because I get that question. What's it, what's, how do you cheat that? Uh, it only takes one person and they will know many, many things like that. And I think it's possible now. And somebody's going to walk into a cop shop and demand their weed back soon. That is going to be a fucking great program. Yeah. So anybody, if you're out there and you're thinking of actually going to get your weed back, please film it because we'll send it out there for yeah. you. Yeah, we'll put it out there. That'd be funny. And the forensic department is going to actually start running in. The, crew may be on the forensic department. to clear 18 months of backlog and get on with murder shit and DNA and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it's amazing that all the things that stoners have been stereotyped for yeah. now fall so snugly on the shoulders of the detractors. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things, all those mantles like all the conspiracy theories and mad claims. We don't need to make any more and they're making them extra hard and extra desperate. They're it's very feeble. They're making their own names for Paul now. Yeah. I mean, people are awake to their game mostly, I think. I like to think. Although so, sometimes I'm very sort of disappointed by the ignorance that's like them. Yeah, that's We've reality though. We've got a lot of work to do, folks. Educate, educate, educate. But there's a lot of people nice that's, about it. There's Please. a lot of people that's, that's, that's taking the first step with a little bit of education. They are busy. Mm. And the nation is creating all new calls here. And we're going to see it too, which is multi uh, season. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that I was thinking of about um, the, the, the judgment 
It's given the cannabis community as a whole a chance to actually survive. The whole thing, the, the, all this thing about licensing in other countries and the cannabis culture being killed by big pharma and stuff. We have our, our inalien right, inalien, <laughs> woo, Freudian slip, <laughs> our inalienable rights to actually prevent any of that now. I reckon the craft cannabis industry is going to be alive and well, thankfully, because that's kind of where we're all positioned. For now. For now. For a generation. It'll morph. The plants will tell us Kimo Sabi. Yeah. As soon as the industry is big enough and it's grown up, it will take care of itself. Mm. It's Just like to, any, it's going to grow organically yeah. and it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, but there's, there'll be the usual... Um, well, we're going to get into the, yeah, the big corporate. Oh, is oh, oh, Jeremy oh, around? Jeremy. Is Jamie around yet? Hey! Oh, no, oh. I can see you perking up there, Brent. Jeremy, cool. Um, we'll get to oh, hear you in a minute. Yeah. Hold on. Hey. Hey. Jeremy Eckler. Hello Jeremy, hello Macy, thanks for Hi, hanging on and joining us. We've had all sorts of dramas. We think we think uh, YouTube's throttling us now and uh, they don't like our content. So we jumped over to Facebook and so far so good on that. So thanks for joining us. Have you, how long have you been listening to the conversation? Okay, now we can't. Hello Jeremy. No. Okay. Well, no, I can, can hear Jack. Yeah, I can hear you, Mike. Hello, Jeremy. Stand by, it looks. Yeah. Can you hear us, Jeremy? Say something. Say something. No. No. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, so, uh, so, 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 well, shout outs. This is around so, and um, Fox. We want to know what's going on in England. And you can join up with Dan and do the whole thing. Hello, Indigo. Indigo girls watching. Indigo. Um, pity she can't post hula hoops during the, the next yes, intermission or something. Um, We're going to need standby entertainment that just comes in. <coughs> yeah, so now Darren Hopping Mills. If someone steals your ducker, can you lay a charge at a cop shop? I would love to be a fly on the wall the first time that happens. It's your private property, it's done off of your private space. Yeah. Especially if the photo evidence. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's... Yeah. So what if your mate tries to... Uh, some gets pay someone to steal it to see what happens to the, at the cop shop. For, set that up like a... Like a Leon Schuster. Like a Leon Schuster, yeah. Of your stuff. <laughs> good. Hey, Darren, that's a good question, Bruce. Uh, uh, why don't you let us know? And we don't and, know yet. <clears throat> and Darren Allen says, "Did you see the article in the Cape Argus that says the Ducker Ducker ruling is immoral?" Really? Oh yeah, but it was see, like, it, it was coming from um, uh, Indian stroke Muslim, perhaps rehab part of the world, and that it's a, yeah, it's a pre. I think it's coming from very very hectically preordained views of the whole subject. Okay. And if you start bringing immorality into it, um, somebody, okay. do you remember Quentin Ferreira? Yeah. Do you remember a psychologist? A long time ago. He's called psycho, psy, PSY Colleges, yeah, and he yeah. emigrated in Portugal. He retweeted that actual article and, and quoted Nietzsche, and he said, uh, paraphrasing, the best way to control any population is uh, the, uh, by immoral, immor immorality is the best way to lead people by the nose. Okay. Yeah. You just, yeah, they turn their nose up at what they don't like, something, and their, their whole view is twisted. Something interesting happened here now, because not everything is moral is legal, not everything is legal is moral. Yes. But now, in that, something changed in the legal aspect. Yeah. So somebody's morals is now disrupted here because they think it is immoral, just because something became legal. What, like a whole dawning of the new way of well, thinking? Well, now well, the coming age of into Aquarius. the judiciary and changing the laws of this the well, same. Like, as a whole. That would be cool. It, it has to be. It has to be. Well, the, same, like, the same guy's going to moan about alcohol as well. He'd probably think alcohol is immoral. He should be moaning. Unless it's the blood of Christ, of course, and then yeah. it's like two-sided shit. But is this, like you say, is this the dawning of the big of bigger things? Is this the gateway to potentially tip legalization? Because there's some oak, Peter Jeremy and Russ Prince, and had the motivation to go through similar motions uh, could effectively this moral decision then be made to legalize or decriminalize other drugs like Portugal? It has to be. But the interesting thing here, it's right to privacy one, more so than DACA actually. Yeah. 
Uh, there's a right to privacy. Right, right to privacy. Yeah, that's and, and that principle is, can be extended quite far. Um, All the way. So what, what that needs to happen here next is the balls to take that, that little step further. Push it and see where, where's that edge. Set principles, or set precedents along the way because it's going to be social clubs. And the Spanish model is where it's at because the Spanish model is based on right to privacy. Yeah. It's like cut and paste almost. We can I'm sure close. they will, it will morph into such things as communities realize that the monkey's off their back and slowly they'll start talking about it and f fixing it up for themselves. That's one of our major messages on the desired outcomes too, was doing it for yourself and just breaking your own boundaries and talk to your local cops and say, listen, this is how it is. If, if you have any complaints, kick us out. But we're going to actually yeah. be up front. Uh, Warren John Smith and... He's, he's thinking of doing some stuff. He knows the cops well. He has a track record of not being arrested by them because he's an amazing family man and he blazes up. So they, they know that there's lots of cops like that now, I'm sure. Uh, Alex says um, that you, what you mentioned about uh, privacy and nothing to do with the plant, he's asking about the trial of the plant. And basically that has to be resolved because Merkel and I are on the dealing charge. Just like all the other dealers, we have to go to court to face charges of being dealers. So we look forward to it actually, yeah. uh, because we want to thrash this out, because I'm sick of people saying that if you smoke weed, you are, you are statistically going to throw your fucking kid out of a window with you attached to it. Get the fuck out of here. Blame on whatever you want at the time. You, Jesus, circumstances. Oh, it stinks of weed. It must have been that. But it wasn't 30 years of trauma. Oh, he had eight years in Iraq <laughs> or something, you know. Uh, anyway, so... Something we wanted to ask last week, Jules, and it was a bit chaotic and all. Mm. I'm, I'm sure we should get this audience member. I'm sure he can come stand by the mic without showing his face and ask the question for us, because I think he can articulate it best. But you had a good question about the yeah, case. So which we need. We can't hear you, dude. No, no, it's cool. I'll, uh, I'll speak up. So the guy was asking that when you go to court, can't they just say, but the precedent has already been set because of the judgment that's already been passed now? So your trial, they basically snub your, they, they your could, suing them. They could. We hope they do because it means we don't have to generate loads of money to do go back to court because it's daunting. But on the other hand, um, we're dealers and there's nothing about a dealer. De to deal is to ship, to have, to sell, to, and there's a whole thing, the blog post that went around the houses. Jesus, yes. that blog post went around the houses, dude. Yeah. Got it out. I drove 10 hours. Somebody sent me the directive, the, the, the latest cop one, and with the annex on it. He sent me that as I was walking through the door. We'd done 10 hours in the car. Myrtle went to bed, and I put that blog together for four hours with all the links and chronological order. Because I had the hell in with the three kilos thing as well. And I just fucking put it all in one. This is our opinion, and we've walked away from it. Sure. Wow, it all comes out of the wash, eh? Yes, dude. Went round. Uh, interesting, story. Story. interesting question. The, the other massive no, question awesome. people have been asking is, what about the people in jail? Yeah. Damn it, man. That's one of the biggest ones up there. Oregon's releasing under fifty thousand people. Yeah, Oregon's bringing. They're dealing with it, and that is a year into legalization. Yes. Yeah, so, Myrtle figures it's an amazing way for them to say sorry without moving their lips. Yeah. Because they've been, they have been for 20 odd years in the new South Africa. They've been enacting apartheid laws on their own fucking people. And they should say sorry. But the trial of the blonde is, yeah. is going to fight for that. For the well, the history well, the history's already much, in it. Yeah. I want the whole trial to carry on because there's yeah, just no, so much information that has to be put yeah. out there and verified and well, you know, ventilated uh, and all the big words. Which so I, can, I want it done. Somebody made the point that because the Con Court literally said that we know alcohol is more devastating than weed, mm -hmm. then it sort of negates having to bring David Nutt out or, or uh, 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 Donald Abrams. Well, the because argument is made. That, the point was made that you cannot make it more hectic because this, you know, this. Yeah, yes. So uh, this that's cool. But we can still do science, uh, sort of criminologists and sociologists. And bring on the doctors with their fucking statistics yeah. about axe murdering and fucking sleeping with your mother and Christ knows what. Because yeah. also, well, the only thing I can really say to the likes of Doctors for Life and Sanker is if we're all grown up at the end of the day and we're going to put on our big girl panties and look eye to eye and agree that we're not always going to agree about things, and that's okay. But 
one thing we must all keep in mind is the way I understood it is how many judges were on that constitutional bench? 13 or 9 or something? There was 9 on the day, 10 making the decision. And they unanimously, every fucking one of them. So don't say minority in my face. Yeah. Don't say when I rest yeah. in my face. Yeah. Go look at that bench of people there. Don't question me. Go stand there in front of them if you want to. And question them yourself because you have that right like we do. Yeah. And if you haven't got the fucking balls to do it. Do you remember when... Then you know what to do. Remember when Reg did it? Yeah. And they would... What are you whining about? Get to the point. Why are you here? Yeah. And now everyone has got a very good question here. What happens if you smoke at home with a co-worker and that person then accuses you of smoking? Work tests you after three days and you're positive. I received a final written warning and was told zero tolerance at work. All this, but I don't smoke at home uh, at work. Yeah, Renault, we are waiting for eight years now for someone to step up to the plate the minute it happens and we film the whole thing of you going to Sanka to plead your human rights and the bullshit that they're trying to force you out because of their personal choices, not yours. So, um, Renault, drop, us, drop an email, get in touch with us at info at dachacouple.coza because between Quinn at the Clear Option and I, We've been putting case reports together for a long, long time now, and there's going to be one special one, one day, where you're going to have to have balls to go back to your employer and call them out. But if the more that people do it, the more you will change everything for everybody else. So have a think about it, dude, because if it's happening to you, and you're being victimized, and you think you're doing your job well, then we'd like to hear from you. And that goes for every other listener out there. You'll be setting precedents. You'll, you'll literally be helping us... Fix, well, like the things that fix, the, fixing. fix the holes yeah, in, the, yeah. in the constitutional judgment. Because yeah. what, the, what they essentially did is there's still a board, there's still parameters to this ruling, but they effectively wiped the board clean <laughs> with what's had going on yeah. forward. Yeah. And now it's up to us and you at home and the ones around you to fight these fights. Because if, if you get that win now, it's written. Yeah, because if you wait 24 months from now and the rules are written, you have no chance. So this is your part to stick your feet in the cement. Pick up the fence and yeah. move it. Good analogy. Yeah, the goalposts are now moving, and you do do what we're doing on the hot box. We're having a torrid time getting the hot box out nowadays because they're clipping us and clamping us, and they don't like our content. And I'm not saying it's because we're popular, because this is a tiny, tiny little blip of an operation. But as soon as you start saying the word Dacha and, it's, and cannabis and the content, the bots are there, and we can feel it getting squeezed. It's a bitch. Right? We're going to have to start speaking in code words. I was just going to say we need to come up with a new hashtag. And well, we, code. we do half the time. I reckon half the time that people watch this that don't smoke. Yeah. But I reckon there must be some bots out there that watch us regularly that are woke as fuck yeah. from watching us and Joe Rogan and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephen Poston says to Renault, the test, com can the test companies can do a bullshit. The, the, the tests themselves, they're, they're not absolutely 100% all of the time. It's a numbers game. Yeah. So um, if you are forced to get a test, get a test with a private, with another company, not the work test. Tell them we're going to go to your local pharmacy to get the test. Go independent. Go independent. That's They're going to make you pay for it. Yeah. As long as you don't make uh, pay Martin for Latham it. says it's actually woke bots, but it's well, probably Toka bots. <laughs> <laughs> it's Toka no, bots, no. Martin. We're going to start watching the bots channel soon. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Tracy, go go. Do you remember Jeffrey in Bathurst? Oh, yes. Do you remember Jeffrey that sat with us after a beer in Bathurst? It's a good time in Bathurst. Hello, Jeffrey. Nice Thank to you see you, buddy. I can answer Matt from the Mervis. Answer it. Yeah, the thing and answer it. Yeah, so Matt, um, you say you know, I have a question as well. I do have a medical. I do a medical annually and I work on the mine, but now that I smoke at home, why not? Will I be able to fight a situation like that if I do or might lose my job? Um, in the mining situation, there's heavy health and safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you would actually need to take a little bit of a smoke break and your THC intake needs to go down and you need to take the test if you want to keep your job. Because the mining industry is, is super tight. You're not going to get away from that one. Booze as well. Yeah, so no, zero. Zero for everything. Zero, zero. So Except your doctor's medication. You're actually lucky because it's annually. So as long as you do your job and everything's fine, 
And so once a year, go mm -hmm. down, keep it tidy for like four, five, six weeks. There's a yeah. few ways you can do that. Yeah. Don't rip bombs in the mine. Yeah. You know, the rasters in Profound are the ones that are always getting nailed. Or the ones that w were all getting nailed, mm -hmm. they'll be chilled a bit now. Fucking amazing. So they work on the mines down the road from Puffrader in the middle of nowhere. And as soon as they get back after a 10 week stint from the hostel, um, they've watched for two days and then they're arrested because they'll have weed in their system. And then they'll have to dry out again to go back to the mine. And it's a constant mission. But I saw another, but when we, when we used to be on YouTube this evening, there was another comment about uh, the mines testing for weed mm. and loads of people are on weed all of the time when they don't get tested. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's how the management mm. feel. I think the long and the short of it is that, you know, the rules are the rules within work context already. Try not to fuck up on the job. Try not to maybe smoke on the job. That would be a good idea. And also remember the company you keep. Because yeah. I, I come from corporate and I've been the oak stick in the knife fucking trying to fire the mom of two. Have you been there? Have you been there? there? That other side of the desk. And they will only when there is a motivation, because you're just not fitting lacquer, yeah. does it get really used. Mm. So if you're doing a good job, do a good job. But if there are rules, also be reasonable and understand. You know. And don't gloat, because it's, it's super cool yeah. use if you use weed. And don't ram it in their face. Yeah. I fucking told you so. Yeah. Did, just you, you know how you do your fly up so that your dick doesn't hang out. <laughs> Poker face at work about your weed thing as well, you know. Yeah. Slowly, it's slowly. sad, but it's reality. Yeah, slowly, slowly catching. Well, Look, I mean, it depends on your work environment as well. Because oh, I also sorry. come from a corporate, and I used to do. I was HR, and the problem is, is that I used to organise all the training and the boss barada and all the things, and I was the one who took the mallet and with the weed and got everybody fucked for the whole time. <laughs> the more corporate you are, and the bigger the company, the more sensitive you have to be. Yeah. Right. It's your, choice, yeah. it's your choice to the environment. Personally, I've never worked for anybody who'd give a shit what was in my blood, and I remain that way. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to work for anybody who wants to know what's in my bodily you know foods. It's only to cover their ass so you can blame it on someone when a car crashes or some, some fucking extenuating circumstance. But I imagine one day people will pay for vials of our blood because it's just so THC enriched. Oh, well, the transplant being rejected. Sounds yeah. delicious. Oh, Reese's <laughs> eyesight. <laughs> so, let's get into a bit of big business. This is actually the first yeah. international story of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's run in time.com. It tunes Coca Cola is eyeing a possible entry into the cannabis market. <laughs> Aurora Cannabis Inc. Ah, led, pot <laughs> led pot stocks higher after Coca Cola Co. said it's eyeing the cannabis drinks market, becoming the latest beverage company to tap into surging demand for marijuana, marijuana products as traditional sales slow. Coca Cola <sighs> says it's monitoring the nascent industry and is interested in, drug or in drinks infused with CBD the non-psychoactive ingredient in marijuana that treats pain but doesn't get you high. And then I just want to go on a little bit to s to speak about some of the companies that are also... Get to mention, it doesn't get you high but it takes away the high. And it adds sugar. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to get into all of that, <laughs> but let's speak Fuck. just... They speak about some of the companies. Because Coca-Cola is not the only one who's thinking about getting involved in this. Yeah, of course. They say Molson Coors Brewing Co. is starting a joint venture with Quebec's Hexos Corp. Formerly, yeah. formerly known as Hydro Thet Fucking Corp to whatever, to develop cannabis drinks in Canada. Diego PLC, maker of Guinness Diego. beer, Guinness Oaks, is holding discussions with at least three Canadian cannabis yeah. producers about be about a possible deal. BNN Bloomberg reported last month Heineken, NV's Luganitas Craft Brewing okay. label, has so, so everybody. Is getting into if it was legal for industrial use here, yeah, we could be fucking reaping the benefits of all of this great I big international corporate interest. Good God. Fuck's sake. Can you believe it that Coca-Cola is now going to put, what, a couple of drops of uh, essence of hemp oil or something into a fucking... Probably absolute, absolutely fuck all mm -hmm. CB, but enough to put it on the label. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's some yeah. sort of bizarre percentage yeah. of something. Yeah. Just because... 
Yes, yes, I think it's just a marketing exercise. Yeah. I would say in the background, I was saying it's just a marketing exercise. It's a marketing exercise, and I wouldn't put the, it past them if they put it made synthetic. I wonder it's why they don't want to get into this, into this, into this psycho active market. Why are they making the point that it's non psychoactive? Don't they want to get. They don't want to touch well, that. Yet. yet, yet they want to be in because now all the now all the alcohol because he mentioned and 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 how is a push it's a foot in the door and how is a push and and how is a push yeah exactly remember the fucking rap party in there um, <laughs> where the fuck was that place Sinsa yes there was a horrible rap party yes yeah, this blew a conference that was a bit up in <coughs> the proverbial they had three venues for a little conference it was so hectic to right be place. in the right place at the right time and the rap party was in this bar that had been cooking all day with big screens and rugby and now there's a band and everyone's fucked at the bar. The entire and town is there. The basically. entire <laughs> town is basically there. <laughs> and there's two dozen extremely straight looking people who don't use alcohol and don't necessarily go to raucous bars full of piss heads. And to the Rastafari, the Rastafari it was offensive. You know? They went into the other side of the building. Right? Cool. Yeah. So anyway, we found a spot at the bottom in a lapper and uh, we set up a dab rig and had our own queue at the bar. But um, right we had to, it was, yeah. like a, it was like a form of apartheid. <laughs> <laughs> so, ooh, at the bar. <laughs> ooh, now that you mention that, I don't know if that other oak still watching this. Yes, he is. Nice to comment. So, so, this oak whose tunes we were all fake news about that three kilogram thing. Yeah. So, I'm going to, I'm going to stand tall yeah? I make no bones about the colour of my skin and the privilege that it still carries. I acknowledge that. Probably. Yeah. But, uh, and so I can't say when something's typically racist because I can't make that call. But this oak who's been trolling us, he made a statement this week that the, the current effects of prohibition and that are more severe than a pipe coat. And I think that little oak needs to just take a little step back and think about that because he's a little white boy saying a big thing about a much bigger thing. Yeah. No, but he's a, in a small pond. Uh, he's in the middle of nowhere. It, it's um, it's all right. We'll he'll find money for meds soon. We we'll okay. He'll disappear for another few months. As soon as he gets some more fucking meds, he'll be fine. Um, so uh, what did I just see here? Simon Poston. Q. If I grow a plant and it's a male, can I can I donate it to the local police station? <laughs> What do you think the answer to that's going to be? I think, I think this, again, I'm going to be pushing. <laughs> Have you ever walked into an SPCA and they got that chart? And it says, this, these two dogs can make this many dogs. <laughs> and these many dogs can make this many dogs. And these many dogs can make this many dogs. <laughs> I think we need a fucking weed SPCA. Because yeah. if your oaks aren't pulling your fucking males, I'm going to burn your house down. Yeah. <laughs> you have a responsibility. <laughs> to pull those males. Just pull. Even as, fuck, jokes aside. Yeah. Please, folks. Yeah. It's, going to be, it's going to be so many of you all, it's going to be your first season. That one male can fuck up shit for kilometers yeah, around. No, be, yeah. Five Ks. So don't, don't go large all at once. Don't go large and TXT. Do your research before you... Tom LaRue, Julian Blitter. Hello, Julian, all the way from... Jesus, he's in... You're in Vancouver, bro, aren't you? Ha-ha! Nice, dude. I think he's in Vancouver, yeah. Wow. Uh, Arno, hello Arno, good evening, you've come over, to come to the other side, brother, come to the other side, <laughs> we're on the other station, and it's, Aha! it's Jeremy, we've got, Jeremy, we've got Jeremy in house, should I let you drop? Uh, hang on, hold on, can we hear you? Hello, Bridget. Yay! Hey. Yes. yes, yes, that was an ordeal. Thank you, gentlemen, Thank you, gentlemen in the corner for corner. fucking persevering with that. Evening, Jeremy, have you been listening in? Uh, yes, I have, for a while. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry about the wild bit, but it's been quite entertaining no so far. We've covered quite a lot of ground, as you can hear. Yes. Well, we'd like to ask you a huge, huge question. Sure. How's your week been, Bruce? Um, on one side, it's been swamped with interviews with various media, but on the other side, I'm concerned about the uh, folks in uh, Port uh, Shepston who are still in jail without bail for eight months and about Ruf van Royen who just before the judgment got five years for dealing half a ton and so it's not easy to be totally happy without thinking about those guys. Agreed, yeah. Um, we, we've had some good news from the Port Shepston side. It's under control 
and, and a lot of important people now know about those people languishing in jail. Myrtle spoke to the wives today as well, and it is a, it's much more in control. Did yes, you hear about person. the kilo and a half bust on the south coast as well, two days uh, after? Yes. Yes, that was on the 21st of September, um, yeah, Charmaine's well, you, bus. Well, do you know that the woman had it in her car? We spoke to her, somebody spoke to her this afternoon, and she said she was busted with it in her car. So yes. that is as per the constitutional judgment, judgment not? Yes, that's yes. a private place. And... Uh, our person and our property and our possessions are all considered to be private place in terms of Section 14 of the Bill of Rights. So what, what do you think would make it for a cop to have to stop you on the side of the road and be able to search you because you've got a kilo in the boot? Well, I think that those cops were still operating according to the uh, Western Cape at home only judgment. And I just don't think they had the information about the new constitutional court judgment for some reason. And they were uh, out of line. And I think that case has got to be uh, withdrawn. And the weed must be given back too. Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, have you been listening to our conversation about that? We, uh, we're waiting for the first person to go in. But uh, apparently somebody in PE has actually just done that recently. So um, uh, that was... I think we know who it is. I think we just met him on tour. He's getting his stuff back from. Um, did he get involved with him as well? He had the uh, wrong no, surname at so. the wrong time. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. I don't think okay. so. Uh, but I'm very glad to hear that at last the police will uh, uh, respect our grows when they want to question how much we've got and all that. They can't just go and trash them and pull them out. They've got to take photographs and take us to the magistrate to discuss the matter further and respect our property. You can't just pull it out and call it evidence anymore. You must photograph it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you have to stick your ground with that. You really do have to um, brush up on a few things and transcend what fear you have left for the cops when they, if they do come around because you do have so many more rights written down by nine unanimous judges it's a powerful thing eh? yes well they gave it to us on section 14 which is the right to privacy but there were many claims that i made in my plethora of claims as the western cape judgment called it uh like my section nine equal rights to equal treatment to the law as tobacco and alcohol we haven't quite achieved that um Cigarette smokers, as far as I know, can smoke in a park, but we can't smoke in a public place. Um, those kind of inequalities still exist there. Um, cigarette smokers can light up in smoking sections of public bars and commercial restaurants, smoking sections, but we, are, we can't really do that yet, or maybe we should try to do that. Um, I've got a question there. If you get yeah, to sure. If you get the consent of anybody in the smoking room. Yeah, I think then you've got a case. And they'd welcome you and probably ask you for some. <laughs> and then maybe they'll, you know, they'll charge corkage or something. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, uh, the other thing is um, the, this three kilograms thing presumes that the police have a right consumption. And once again, just the judgment was only about this plant as a recreational so-called not nutrition uh, supplement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
every there will be pollen everywhere if there's a land race being growing anywhere. So uh, the high grade cute strains that many people like will have to be under uh, uh, plastic tunnels because there will be other uh, land race uh, cannabis in the area for sure. I think that's a very good point because Buzz was saying if you, you know, one piece of pollen is going to wreck everybody's harvest. So I think it's mostly if you are growing some high grade in your garden and you want to keep it that way, then you're going to have to make your own precautions and create your own environments. But um, this will all morph as we're going along. I don't think we're going to see tracks and tracks of hemp just yet. Mm-hmm. And what did it call grow for yourself? Ah, because I'm a chronic patient, and that's been one of my one of my concerns is the primary caregiving angle is a lot of sick people. So when it comes to the dealing and supply side, how do we deal with the aspect of sick people that's physically incapable of growing for themselves? Yeah. We, that, we deal privately. We deal yeah. privately. We do yeah. everything that we claim with regard to this plant, like economic benefits, construction, etc. Uh, medicine, we just deal privately and uh, uh, put up a board which says private cannabis zone if you must and keep out, no unauthorized SAP and stuff <laughs> like that. And, <laughs> and, and that's it. <laughs> Why not? No, I'm with you. no you're absolutely right. It, it, it'll either make them think twice or it'll just inject more t- testosterone into the back of their heads. It, go, it could go both ways. Well, I, I think it's. I think there's a, a you know for stickers for your car, private private hot box, or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> you know, dollar hot box. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, whoever decides to get into your car is entering a private cannabis zone, and they must respect that. And I think this this could be a lot. There could be a lot of uh, cool graphics coming out of this. <laughs> I can I can see Arks getting an Uber. Just to sit inside it for 15 minutes and smoke a joint. <laughs> yes, well, I, I think that the whole idea of a Dacher Uber, where the, where the fee includes um, some high grade in a little place and under a little like a fly um, cover, uh, yeah, pre, pre rolls, pre rolls, <laughs> um, and you, you hit those stuff while you go for a ride. The Tarry Taxi. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, if dealing is a problem, can you then... see my weed? <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's see your weed. Yeah. 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 Show us your weed, Jeremy. That's so, yes, legendary, bro. So there you go. <laughs> this is my curry that I went and bought, and I'm deciding that I'm going to probably uh, uh, enter into some private um, transactions with private friends in a private place. <laughs> is it three kilograms? And uh, no, this is only about 250 grams. It's okay. four parcels. And has it got any decent headlines on the newspaper? Uh, no, it's all just shop right or uh, um, game advertising. <laughs> uh, like. So how's the, how's the headlines been? Have you been busy with the, with the media? You must have been. Uh, yes, I have. How do you like that? Uh, that, wow. looks, that looks absolutely fantastic. Nice. Have you got a blade big yeah. enough? I know this is this is uh, just they all look like heads all wedged together from out of the parcel, and I think that's really cool <laughs> stuff, eh? Yeah, it's got loads of seed in it, but people, uh, maybe I'm going to sell the seed at a hell of a price as well. <laughs> no, no, don't mention the S word, bro. No, it's a donation to the needy. Oh uh, yes, sure. No, we can do that too privately. <laughs> We're going to sell seeds at robots. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, Richard, so I have a question. Yeah. Uh, tell me, um, I know we're all very happy with the ruling, and we know yep. it's progress, yeah. and I'll definitely take progress. Where do you think the ruling could have done more or been better? I think they did it very subtly by staying with this privacy approach. Um, I would have liked to have re- uh, had the prisoners released uh, as part of the deal without any further need for court orders or applications or, or waiting for the legislation. I think that's something our culture really wants. And um, uh, how we get that right is a big question. It could have just been achieved by order of the court, and that would have been so cool. 
uh, but uh, the yeah, that, that's the only real issue that I have with it, with it at the moment. I'm just concerned about the future and the fact that this prohibitionist government is most likely going to drag its heels and sell us out to the corporate sector, particularly in the seed uh, genome management side of things. Uh, corporations may take over the genome, mess with it, sell it back to us. I'm not cool with that stuff. Now, this is why the fight has only just begun. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think. Sorry, I'm just away, but I, re I reckon that there's enough to go around, Jeremy. Don't you think they can have it? We've got our inalien inalienable rights to to grow and breed and cultivate whatever we want to do. They can do whatever they want now. And if there's people out there who want to buy a pack of twenty twack next door to the pick and pay, then they could do that. Um, you know the corporate Operation, this prohibition all the way from the fossil carbon guys to the big pharma guys, even the tobacco and alcohol industries all benefited. I want to see communities benefiting it from it. And if you're going to buy Rollies, don't buy. We shouldn't be. We this, this this right to production should remain in the people, not in corporate bodies that are uh, remote shareholders taking over local areas and growing monocrops for outside profits to go to the outside. It should be locally controlled, locally managed for local benefit. And from there on, you can get your rollies and your twack. And maybe it should be done on a, on a land race basis where your area might have a specific blend of high grade and land race by virtue of uh, local breeding initiatives. And then you get to smoke something unique to your area. Um, but yeah, I, I I want to see people coming together around the tree uh, and forming cooperatives to value add the fibers and get and deal with the seeds and process seeds into hemp food. Uh, those kind of things. We, we can't do this all man alone. We can't capitalize an industry man alone. But if we just get the locals to uh, work together, then there is the potential for uh, festivals, planting seasons, harvesting seasons, a uh, better management of the cannabis seed, uh, and and actually being producers who value add the product before it goes into the corporate networks. Uh, their networks are still valid. If we yeah. we the locals produce fuel out of cannabis and we can sell it to our local uh, petrol stations. Uh, for distribution to passers by, then that's one new relationship that can happen that's positive. The state hospitals are going to need tons of cannabis oil. Um, and so the local growers would grow for local clinics. So maybe the, the system has to reshape itself around the tree rather than just try and uh, fit it into the present corporate oriented reality. I hope you're right, Jeremy. It's the kind of vision that we've got at Fields of Green for All as well. And this is, I think this kind of saves that as a vision for the time being. I think we've got time enough to start doing that. And we have to capitalize on the next two years or more before, you know, I read as well, uh, Pierre de Foss said, if the government do nothing in the next two years, the parts of the, the, the underlying parts that they have suggested that go into the law, go into the law without any reservation. Yes. So that yes. would remain an unspecified amount. So that's quite an yeah. a, yes. um, uh, incentive for the government to do something about it because yes. people like Doctors for Life, when they say unlimited, it's like they can't fucking comprehend it. They're going to be lobbying and we just need to be lobbying fucking harder. That's it. Yeah. That's the real work begins. Ger no, um, Jeremy Myrtle and I'll be down in Cape Town the week after next for Drug Policy Week. Are you in and around? Sure. Well, you know, I think there's a shorter route to two years, if I may suggest. Yeah. And that is the backstop platform of the Dacha Party and the elections 2019 next year and all the youth mobilized to, and registered to vote and a quality list of um, many candidates from all around the country. It's just about doing admin and getting the fundraising together and um, using our existing strong networks, we are a family across the country, uh, to 
uh, get the youth to add their voice and and choose this plant. It allows us to get to the power base of our country. And we need it not just to, to handle the weed issue. We need it to handle, uh, for example, uh, implementing cannabis on a mega scale and supplying the herds of the plant to Cecil for cheaper fuel. You can't ask the government to do that because the vested interests will never do it. But if, if, the, if all the cannabis users became the majority in parliament, there is a possibility that we just say, okay, that's a good idea, let's do it. Big changes have to come, so we have to be big to make the changes. Trace of fact within, Jeremy, we need one seat in Parliament. We don't need the majority of Parliament. We need one seat in Parliament. How much? How much do you need? What's the goal? What's the realistic goal to put to put the deposit down and have an army? I suggest that if you go in into Parliament, one person at it, one seat or two or three MP. Sorry, the audio is breaking up. Yeah, no, we had a glitch there as well. Repeat that. Uh, what the question okay. was, um, how much money do, would it be as a fundraiser? Well, I phoned the IEC the other day just about Parliament and uh, not about provincials. This is just the central house of the nation. He estimates it's not official yet, and it's always promulgated very late for parties to like uh, hustle around the figure. Uh, but uh, last time at uh, parliamentary was 250,000. This year, it's expected to be 300,000, maybe 350,000 rand to raise just to get on the ballot. Okay. It's a shame. And, but, and then we need some funding just to reach the people via their social media, uh, yeah. uh, even if we don't put posters on the polls kind of thing. And, and, and it's about the youth. How do we get to the youth? So realistically, you need about a million. You need, um, yeah, you need like 80,000 US. That's what you need. You know, so it's not much. Sorry, I've know. lost my sound oh, on this side. Can't hear you guys. Oh, uh, no, we've got it. We can, I can hear you, Jeremy. Uh, no, it's frozen. I think we're close to. Hello, man. Can you hear? Are you back again? Marco? Uh, Mr. Acton, Hi. can you hear us? Hello. Mr. Acton, this is the Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> Are you transmitting? Are you carrying dummies across town in an Uber? No, no, gone. But I think we had a good time there with Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. And I also I think we've run into Lank extra time. Yeah, I've been, I think it's been Lank. Hello, Warren. Warren's, come, Warren's come to the other side. Yeah? Where's he going? But that's cool. Let's... Thanks, Jeremy. I think we got the message. All right, Jeremy, if you're streaming this in, then um, thanks for joining us for that. It's um, it's um, it's been quite a week for all of us. I've only just now can hear you as you spoke he's, now. He's just come back. Now. Hello, hello, Jeremy. You there? It's all, yeah, man. Sorry, the sound is really like uh, fragmented. Okay, can we we we've given you up for dead then. And we were just um, slagging you off behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't. No, we weren't. <laughs> any, is there any, any joy? Can we hear you, Jeremy? I can, I can hear you, Jeremy, but can you hear me? No, nah, it's all, it's something's over. Something's up. Shit. Well, thank you for joining us, Jeremy. That was lovely. Always lovely chatting to you. Sure. What the hell? So, I'm not going to squeeze another topic. To find out more about what you need to know, check out Fields of Green and check out the Heiko. We've got interesting articles there. They should all be in the links. But are there any final highs or thoughts that we should be sharing? I think we should let it yours, yours smoked. From, from Kano Kazi. How was it? Um, it's Elon Gates. Elon Gates is time and space because when you said we're coming to the end and I looked at the epic clock. How's that clock? I love Fuck it. that clock rocks. Yeah. It's ten to ten to fifty minutes past bedtime for the hot box. So we've been off and on for a fucking hour and a half at least. Ten minutes for a full two hours, sure. Yeah, so but there's there's a lot of shit to get through, you know? Yes. Lang <laughs> that. You know what we're gonna have to do? Um, you're actually gonna have to write into SABC three and say you'll pay your T V licenses that they put us on every day at seven ten. Yeah. 
just before the news or some shit. Um, Arno uh, is saying uh, the trichoma links in the thing. It, 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 um, so trichoma's up and running. That's quite a menu you got there. And Johnson, Chris, um, thank you so much for the, everything you did in Bathurst. Eh? That you. was a cool house. That bummer was. Fuck, what you yeah. check this house out. Oh, it was the 1820 yeah. foot sec rectory, yes. and it was like. Ah, oh, it was a mansion with wooden floors and, and original furniture, and it was haunted. Haunted as fuck, and eh? We were, <laughs> we were in the bed for <laughs> five she hours. Turned, I turned the bath on, and then I turned around, because our baths had these beautiful claw and ball. Yeah. Whatever. So, you know, and a high back. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put the tap on, and then I turned around to go and get stuff out of my case, and the ghost turned the tap off. Get the fuck out of here. So, um, see, I, I didn't see, see it. It wasn't even loose, it was closed. Yeah. So yeah. I looked at it and I was like, no, bitch, this is not how it works. I'm going to have this bath. And that's like what there is to it. Chris, found, it. Chris found a place for us as an Airbnb thing. And mm. uh, the lady, our landlady, was away because she's in high in demand for doing weddings. She's a justice of the peace doing weddings yeah. around the world, apparently. But what a fucking house this was, and the real bummer was we spent hardly any time in it because it was how it was. What a waste! Because the day after that, the day after that, these guys disappeared to get to the trial, to, to the to, trial, to the kind court. So much hustle. Yeah, hustle, so much hustle. hustle. But I will say one thing about that that, that haunted house. Mm. I am pretty sure that that ghost gave me a foot rub while I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like according to legend, she's a nun, so I wasn't expecting <laughs> any evilness about it. You know, she just was a bit sad. And she's probably one of those old school women where a yeah. woman must know her role. Uh, Jamal Salbardino says, "Don't stress about the time because it's only 2:47 a.m. in China." China, <laughs> China. China. <laughs> Fuck, so he's from right. China. Hi, dude. I bet he's from China. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's our first one from China. That's could be. Um, could be. Well, she, that is. She, she. What's up next? Uh, what's up next? Nothing's up next. We can talk about no, 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 the foreseeable future. You're going on tour again? We're doing Drug Policy Week and we're doing, uh, we're going to be in Cape Town at the Labia Theatre on the Monday after Drug Policy Week. We're going to book the shit out of that and that's our, that's a full circle as well. Didn't you book it for us once? 2013 or something? I've all, yeah, yeah, back in the early well. days with Lindsay Martin. Yeah, it's, so Are it's like right? full circle back to Labia and we're going to do a presentation in French. Okay. And then we've got two presentations and meet the, the farmers and all the people from the Ponderland of Drug Policy Week and it's busy as hell. And then um, we got a couple of private functions to get through of, um, of um, very stony proportions. And then we've got some big news coming up for you very early in December because we thought we might have a party. So okay. stand by to lock that down, and I'm sure it's a plug and play. And I tell you what, we all need a party. So uh, we're going to have a bit of a celebration in Johannesburg at one of our favourite spots. So keep your eye out for the artwork, and um, mm. we're going to get um, blazed. Mm. Yeah, we're going to get high. Yeah, no, it's quite a private place. I heard. Mm. Mm. So uh, I think that's the short-term <laughs> plan. So please also, Oaks, remember, like. Uh, Mr. Dabber Dude, love your Instagram. And uh, Louise Maxwell, hello, goodbye. London Sassoon has hooked up with everybody. Alexander Dowding. We, apparently, they're overgrowing <laughs> Barrydale as we speak with the biggest <laughs> harvest of all. Yeah, yes. so if, lo if all the little towns like that around the country mm. bandied together mm. and grew their own weed for their own oil and said, fuck you to the cops, what exactly are the cops going to do? Because the chances are the magistrate's going to be on the fucking oil. So, anyway, let's see how it rocks. But yeah. be cool and be safe and just treat it as normal for now. Yeah. But, hey, no more paranoia. And before we sign up, I think the award tonight for, and no one said anything in the comments, where's the fucking trolls? I love you trolls, come out of the shadows, come talk shit in the comments. And if you need, if you need any product testing, we're the people to do it, okay? Award for whitest legs goes to me. And let's know, check all these tan motherfuckers here, check me fresh from the matrix. These things be so light and white, you can grow weed under them. <laughs> <laughs> Stay lit. Bye. Bye. Enjoy. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,